The following is a brief overview of the new multi-layer aquifer analysis capabilities included with aquifer test version 2016.1. With this new solution, you can estimate the hydraulic parameters for leaky confined multi-layered aquifer systems, which includes the transitivity and storage coefficient of the pumped and unpumped aquifers, and the hydraulic resistance of aquitarts which can then be used to calculate the leakage factor. With this method, you match the type curves to the drawdown from data collected in the observation wells, and these observation wells may be screened in the pumped aquifer or the unpumped aquifers. This system is conceptualized as a layered model, and it's based on the analytical solution, which is published by Hemker and Mass in 1987, with more details available at the reference section at the end of this discussion. So here's a brief illustration of what we're talking about. On the left, we have your standard sink, single leaky aquifer, which is typically analyzed with the Hantouche solution. In the middle, we have a leaky two aquifer system, which is more, most often analyzed using the Newman Witherspoon method. And the new method we've added to aquifer test is on the right, which is a multi-layered leaky aquifer system based on the Hemker and Mass method. With this method, you can have a wide number of variety of uh, aquifers, which are separated by aquitards. So a number of benefits of the solution, uh, the biggest one being that the analysis takes into account the best fit from all wells in each aquifer in order to determine a single set of aquifer parameters. Whereas your other solutions such as Tice or Newman will provide you estimates for the parameter values on a per observation well basis. Therefore there's no need to average the values from each individual well afterwards as you would have to do with other solutions. The solution is quick, uh, you get a very fast uh, estimation, it has minimal data requirements and minimal learning curve. In the past you'd have to use uh, a 3D numerical model in order to get the estimates for the parameters in this type of configuration and uh, with the use of the solution it overcomes the use of the numerical model so you don't have to struggle with the, the steeper learning curve uh, of numerical models and also the fact that they can be time consuming to design and run and also can be more burden in terms of the data requirements. The new multi-layer solution can be applied in a variety of scenarios. Uh, some examples are shown here where you can do forward modeling of the aquifer system responses to pumping, either inducing new pumping or adding new pumping wells, estimating drawdown at various times and locations within a well field, and also for pumping test planning where you can simulate tests in order to help determine which parameters can be measured using the available observation and pumping wells. The main new, new setting that's required for this method is the designing the conceptual model. This is the settings window that will appear when you choose the multi-layer method within the program. So your main requirements would be you need to define the uh, number of aquifers you want to analyze and the layer types for each layer. The layers are specified in the first column on the left there. And then the other requirement is that you need to assign each of your observation wells to uh, the different aquifers. You have one aquifer that is pumped and other aquifers that are unpumped. There are a number of requirements and rules regarding the layers that can be used in the multi-layer solution. This is a brief illustration which is included in the user's manual. And generally though the main difference with this solution is that you have to define boundary conditions uh, above the top and bottom of the domain. So uh, for the topmost layer, this can be an aquaclue which has no flow or impervious con conditions. You can then either have uh, an aquitard with or without storage, which can then have no flow above or no drawdown above. The no drawdown scenario is similar to a constant head in a numerical model. The intermediate or middle layers uh, can be any combination of aquifer and aquitard with the one uh, notice that the aquifers must be separated by aquitards. Then your bottommost layer again needs to be an aquaclude, which has again uh, impervious or no flow conditions, or an aquitard with or without storage, which again can have uh, no drawdown below or no flow below. The data requirements for the multi-layer aquifer solution are similar to the other standard methods. You need your pumping well discharge rate, 
you need your time drawdown measured from one or more observation wells. And then as I illustrated in the previous slide, you need to configure the number of aquifers and the layer types. The assumptions of this solution are the following. The aquifers will have horizontal flow only. Aquitards will yield vertical flow only. The top and base conditions, as we described in the previous slide, are either no flow or no drawdown. Again, a constant head type of scenario. A few limitations in aquifer tests is that uh, we support just a single pumping well, which is fully screened over only one aquifer layer. In addition, there are a number of different assumptions that are typical to what you would find with other pumping tests analytical solutions, which include the homogeneous layers, assuming infinite aerial extent, uniform thickness and isotropic conditions, etc. So the following is a brief example of what we've done to benchmark the method with a numerical model using a visual mod flow flex. So the methodology that we used was to set up a visual mod flow 3D numerical model with a multi-layer aquifer aquitar configuration and some simple transitivity and storage values for each aquifer and aquitard. We have a pumping well located in the middle and then uh, four observation points which are located in the pumped and the unpumped aquifers. We then uh, ran mod flow and extracted the time drawdown data from those points and loaded those into an aquifer test project with the same multi-layer configuration and the same hydraulic parameters after making some appropriate conversions based on the differences. We then compared the theoretical drawdown to the water level data set that was generated by visual mod flow. And as mentioned, we had uh, two observation points in the upper aquifer and two observation points in the lower aquifer. Here are some brief specs on the numerical model inputs. Uh, the model extends for 2000 meters by 2000 meters, roughly 100 rows by 100 columns. Uh, six layers being, whereas the topmost layer is that constant head layer that uh, I discussed earlier. There are three aquitards and two aquifers. We have constant head boundaries located 1,000 meters from the pumping well. The pumping well is screened in layer 5 uh, at a discharge rate of 10 liters per second for a duration of 30 days. And we refined the mod flow grid down to approximately 5 meter by 5 meter grid cell size around the vicinity of the pumping well. The properties for the layers are as follows. This is a cross-section view. Uh, again, we have flat layers. Uh, you'll see we have six mod flow layers. The topmost layer is that constant head layer. And then very simple parameter values for the connectivity and the storage coefficient for the layered aquitard and aquifer. The uh, Pumping is occurring from the fifth layer located here, and this yellow location indicates the pumping well screen. So there are some differences in the way the parameters are defined in visual mod flow versus aquifer tests. So this is where we did the appropriate conversions from uh, the connectivity values in visual mod flow to appropriate transitivity in aquifer tests. And in addition, we converted the specific storage values from the visual mod flow model into uh, storativity based on the layer thickness. Lastly, the C value, which is the hydraulic resistance from the aquitard, was converted using the vertical connectivity from visual mod flow and the aquitard thickness, which is denoted by D prime. So we created the new aquifer test project, defined the observable observation well locations, the pumping well location, the appropriate radial distances, uh, loaded the time drawdown data from that was exported from visual mod flow, and then for the multi-layer solution we defined the layer order as uh, per the benchmark example. In addition, as we mentioned before, we mapped out the observation wells to the appropriate aquifer and uh, the aquifer pumped and the unpumped aquifer. So the results are displayed in the next couple slides. First, this is the time drawdown from each of the observation points that were observed. Uh, again, the duration was uh, 30 days. And obviously the highest pumping occurred in the pumped aquifer, sorry, the highest drawdown occurred in the uh, pumped aquifer.
As a first stage, we looked at the drawdown derivative plots in order to identify the flow regimes. This is a nice example as it shows the delayed yield that can occur uh, in the pumped aquifer. So you'll see the drawdown derivative is shown in green. And then the standard drawdown plot is shown at the top here. So using the diagnostic plots, we can compare the drawdown derivative analysis to one of the typical flow regimes. And you'll see the uh, in the, within the pumped aquifer, it's a nice example of uh, comparing it to what you typically would find in an unconfined or dual porosity scenario. In these examples, you have uh, various flow phases or regimes in the early pumping times. The water is drawn from the lower or the pumped aquifer. The curve then uh, flattens or stabilizes uh, while it's prefer, uh, extracting water from the aquitard. Then during later pumping stages, the water is derived from the upper aquifer and eventually follows the TICE conditions. The unpumped aquifer, the time drawdown results are shown on the right, and you can see that compares nicely to uh, leaky conditions. Uh, in this case, it's just the scenario they have one aquitard above it. These are the dimensionless plots for the data points from the pumped aquifer on the left and the unpumped aquifer on the right. Each uh, graph has uh, two data series from the two observation wells. So again, to recap, what we did is we put in the parameter values within act for test and then compared that to the theoretical drawdown, which was observed or calculated from the multi-layer solution. And you can see here, there's a very nice match between the theoretical drawdown line from the multi-layer method and the actual data points from the 3D numerical model in each of the pumped and the unpumped aquifer. So we ran some additional statistical analysis which is included within the aquifer test program. You can see there's very little difference in the drawdown between the calculated versus observed, uh, reasonable values for the variance and the standard deviation, and you can also see a very nice um, calculated versus observed plot for both the pumped and the unpumped aquifer. So some closing remarks. The type curve fitting, just a few things to keep in mind. There are a high number of parameters that come along with this solution. If you're doing three, four, or any more number of aquifer, aquifers, you're going to have a significant number more parameters than what you'd be used to with your typical Tice or Hantouche or Newman solution. As a result, the uh, curve fitting can be a bit more time consuming and uh, troublesome in terms of finding a solution. So we suggest you apply the curve fitting in an iterative fashion where you uh, start with some reasonable parameter values, uh, lock in the parameter values, then apply the automatic fit, or manually adjust again, again using your best judgment and intuition. Regarding the parameter values within the fit settings, you can specify upper and lower bounds as uh, shown here for each parameter value. And this uh, may help you when applying the automatic fit so that the solution doesn't have as much room for uh, manipulation. In addition, you may find that you need to update the number of iterations and the error tolerance for the solver. I found in the examples we were running, we had to reduce that to one e to the minus six in some cases. In general, we suggest you um, use your judgment for the estimated range of values. You may find that multiple conceptual models may fit um, a single set of test conditions, so we encourage you to experiment with different layer types. And in addition, before using this solution, we are encouraged to read the reference papers which are included in the manual at the end of this presentation. So in summary, the uh, new multi-layer aquifer solution based on Hemker and Mass can be applied to a wide variety of well and aquifer conditions. Uh, you can use it for dual porosity, fractured flow, well effects such as well bore storage, skin effects, etc. However, for the focus of uh, how we've integrated in aquifer tests, we're focused just on the layered aquifer scenario. We encourage you to review the theory and the assumptions before applying for your own use and again, use your own intuition during the analysis and interpretation. I've included a quote from uh, Kruzman and Deritter, which says that analyzing and evaluating pumping test data is as much an art as it is a science. 
Here are some of the references I mentioned throughout the presentation. The first one is the main uh, uh, paper that describes the solution and a few other references that you may find useful. For more details, I encourage you to uh, visit our website, uh, www.waterloohydrogeologic.com. From there, you can download a trial version of AFRA test and learn more about the solution. Thank you for your time.